Philip, good morning, sir. Welcome to the show. Good morning. How you doing? All is well. How long have you been doing your show? Uh, since about, well, let's see, the one we have now, about 2012, but we kind of started on YouTube about 2008 or so, maybe about toward the end of that. And what prompted you to start doing this? Uh, well, what prompted me to start doing this, I saw a brother make a video a um, long time ago, and the title of the video was House In versus Feel In. You know, I want to use that word on the, the program. And it really intrigued me, so I messaged the brother, and um, he encouraged me to, you know, put my opinions out there as well, as we need more opinions, and that's how I got started. Um, your show presents media with a common sense approach. Uh, what does it mean to have common sense, and how do people get it? Well, I don't really think that everyone has common sense sometimes. Uh, and my version of common sense may not be your version of common sense, Jesse. Um, common sense to me is just call it like it is. Call it very plain and simple. Uh, we don't have to really make it so complicated. Uh, and a lot of people really gravitate to our program uh, based upon that. We don't have any corporate agenda. We don't have any uh, one pulling the strings. So most people in America are tired of the establishment, tired of the narratives. I just want to hear it just from a regular person like myself who's a dad, who's a husband, um, a person who sees the concerns in this country within stories that the mainstream media refuse to cover or try to cover with certain narratives. Do we need more truth or opinions? We definitely need truth, of course. Anything you're saying needs to be based in truth and fact. And then once you base it in that, then, of course, we can have our opinions. That's how we learn and grow. And where, where do your opinions come from, and why, are your, why is it that your opinion is important? Well, my opinions, most of them are going to research, and uh, it definitely comes from a lot of, you know, facts and truth. And, you know, now I can't say my, important, my opinion is more important than anyone else. Um, it's just my opinion on things, my social commentary. And for some reason, a lot of people, you know, receive it. They like it, and a lot of people agree with it of you know all races and uh, all actually all over the world people message me about the videos that we present uh and where do we or how do you get common sense i think it's something you have to be naturally born with nobody can really give you that because if you can really get that um then i really would say hey go there to get it um i think it comes from a lot of your upbringing um just really paying attention to uh, the morality that's in your heart on some things, and we just really go from there. I feel, you know, some things, some opinions that I have, um, I feel is really inspired just out of, you know, my life, what I see, uh, what's going on, and just what I feel was right versus what's wrong. I notice that most black Americans don't have common sense today. What happened to them that they lost common sense? Well, Jesse, I'd like to know where you get that assessment from because most black Americans, I mean, do you know most black Americans personally to come up with that assessment? And what facts do you have to back that up? I'm just curious. Uh, would you answer the question first and then I'll respond well, to your well, you, question? Well, I've noticed that most me, black Americans don't have common sense today. How did they lose it? But, I, but you presented me with something that I cannot answer because I'm asking you where do you get that from? Show me the... Uh, facts behind that so I can properly answer you because you asked me something I can't really answer. Do you agree or disagree that most black people lack common, common sense today? Do you agree or disagree? I can't agree to that because so do I don't disagree? know most black Americans to say they lack common sense. I'm not going to be disrespectful to my community or anybody to say they lack something when I don't have the actual facts to back that up. So are you saying you neither agree or disagree with that? I can't agree or disagree because okay. I don't have the facts to back that up. Um, both times, most black people voted for Barack Obama knowing that he is a liar, knowing that he supports abortion, knowing that he uh, hate Christians. He's not a good man. Would a common sense person vote for him twice? Would a common sense voted person vote for him twice? Um that's kind of hard to say that unless you know the issues. I feel you should vote on the issues, whatever that may be. Um, and if you feel Barack Obama was the person for you at the moment and you felt that he um, would help you 
or po- hopefully help you, which I don't think no one should be looking to politicians to help them, then you will vote for them. Um, but I'm not going to try to disrespect a person by saying, oh, they didn't have common sense of voting someone. Because what if I say, well, if you voted for George Bush, you didn't have no common sense. Or what if you voted for Ronald Reagan, you didn't have common sense. You see where that goes? It's, it's just insulting people when you have no idea why they voted for that person. So your, your channel says that you present media with a common sense approach. If you don't know that a common sense person would not have voted for Barack Obama twice. Now, I, I can understand maybe they were deceived the first time around. But this guy supports so-called same-sex marriage. He's weak in the military. He's done nothing but brought on destruction for the country. Um, I don't know if you are a common sense media or you present media with common sense approach. Why would you know to at least vote for him a second time implies that you lack common sense? Well, around the time when Barack Obama was running for president, we were just actually just getting started with our channel um, around 2012 or so. Right. So we are nowhere near where we're at today. Uh, we was kind of started at zero subscribers. And it don't matter who you vote for. Some people don't believe you should vote for Donald Trump and all the racist rhetoric that he liked to say. But I'm not going to insult a person and say, well, they lack something just because of that. I don't want to uh, prolong when, the when question. I, I'm asking you the second time around when he was reelected, mm-hmm. knowing what type of person he was or he is because they had seen him in action would a common sense person have voted for him a second time around? I really can't say they would because who? What choice did you have? You had McCain and Palin. I mean, you who, say who's... you can't say that they would or, mm-hmm. or wouldn't. Would a common sense person vote for him a second time? Well, their version of common sense may say you're Barack not Obama is the, the right person for them, Jesse. You, you can't. You're, you're not you're dodging have... the question. Je- no, I'm not dodging the question. You are I'm dodging the question. question you're Jesse. Not a, you're, you're me saying a yes that no a common sense person. Vote for Barack Obama. A second time around. A second time around. A second time around. Yeah, if if the second time around, they felt Barack Obama was the right choice for them. Then I'm not going to say, oh, it's not common sense to do that. I would say that about anybody. It's your choice. I'm not going to disrespect. Well, I can tell you, no, a common sense person would not have voted for him a second time around. Does most of your audience believe in God? Um. Not all of them do, no. Some How of them most? believe in God. Some of them uh, are atheists. Some of them are Muslim, Hebrew, Israelite. Uh, some of them maybe a 5% nation. I mean, so we have all kinds of people uh, watching our channel. And so you don't know if most of them believe in God or not? Well, I'm just basing it off the comments. I mean, some right. people believe in God and, and, and some people don't, based off of what they admit to me. Some people are atheists. Um, and... You know, sometimes they don't like when we talk about God at times, but that's not really my issue or problem. My convictions are my convictions, but I respect all people. Do you believe in God? Yes, I believe in God, of course. Are you a Christian? Yes, sir. And uh, do you believe that there is right and wrong? Of course there are right and wrong. Sin and unrighteousness, of course. Is For it, real, you ought to know that one. Is it wrong or right to have babies out of wedlock? You should not be having children out of wedlock. I don't. I do not agree with that because it really makes your life hard. I think you need your children need to be raised in um, two parent households, and you know that's just really the proper way. It's hard for a woman to raise a child by herself. Uh, even it's hard for a man to raise a child by you know themselves. So I encourage um, everyone, especially within my community, we need to rebuild uh, our family and have you know two parent households. I always say this: if she's not worth your last name then you shouldn't have a child with her. And I tell women, if he won't give you his last name, you shouldn't have a child with him. Is it immoral to have children out of wedlock? Uh, according to the scripture, it is immoral to do that. What do you say? Really, excuse me? What do you say? Well, I don't agree with it, having children out of wedlock. It, I don't. I'm I asking just, you, is it immoral? Well, I just told you that it was wrong. I mean, in sick. your opinion, uh, Philip, is it immoral to have children out of wedlock? In my opinion, we outside of scripture, you should not be having children out of wedlock. That's I think not I what I ask that. you. I ask you if it's immoral, in your opinion, Philip, to have children out of wedlock. Well, I'm not God to say what's immoral and what's uh, immor- moral versus moral. I'm saying my opinion is I don't agree with having children out of wedlock. But I didn't ask if you agreed. I asked if it's immoral. 
but I'm not God to say something is immoral or moral. But you, you say you believe in God, right? Correct, but I'm not God. So if you believe in God, that means you represent God. Is God your father? He is, but I'm not God. And so don't you support. represent your father on earth? Yeah, you should. <laughs> Best way possible. So you say you are a son of God. Well, I feel I'm a child of God. Ho hopefully he always accept me. Uh, I try to live my life best way possible. Um, and is, is there any proof in your life that you are a son of God? Well, I mean, I accepted the Lord, you know, shoot, I think when I was 15. And um, like I said, I tried to live my life best way possible. Only he could uh, really tell you that one. Uh, do you agree with me that Louis Farrakhan is evil? No, I do not. And why not? Because Louis Farrakhan tries to help his community. Uh, I know a lot of people underneath him personally, even here in Houston. Um, uh, one brother that we have on our program as of now, brother Derek Muhammad, for instance, um, he's out with a group, for instance, no more bloodshed, uh, make sure you check them out. And they stand against the violence within our community. They protest. I have been there with them. Matter of fact, I was with them yesterday. I filmed their protest. And not only they just, you know, stand against what's going on in the community, they actually helping people. So is it evil to call white people the blue eyed devil? Who is doing that? I don't Louis Farrakhan. He well, hasn't done he, it lately, he but has, he has, has a history done that, of doing that. If he has done that, then I'll have to listen to the context and what he did it in. And you probably need to ask him those questions. Not if me. he I did it, uh, if he did it, is it evil to do that? You have to talk to him about that. I'm asking you. Speak for, uh, you're supposed Minister to Farrakhan. be. You said you're a son of God, which means you're on but the it side of righteousness. But it doesn't give me a right to speak for Minister Farrakhan when I am not Minister Farrakhan. I'm, I'm not even following Minister Farrakhan. Um, I'm not a to, student or anything like that, Jesse. So you well, can't we get me to, to say get, that. We tried to get Louis Farrakhan on the show, but he's a coward and will not come on. But let me ask, when Louis Farrakhan said at a church, a black Baptist church down in Florida, um, I'm looking for 10, and I'm quoting, I'm looking for 10,000 fearless, fearless black men to stalk and kill those who kill us, referring to white police officers. Is that evil to call out that type of evil action. Well, once again, Jesse, I'm going to say this. You need to ask Minister Farrakhan about his words. I I'm can't asking speak you. Words. I'm talking but to you. you but you're, I'm not going you're to speak giving out Farrakhan. advice if, if on he, your if, advice if you line. You need to ask Minister Farrakhan those questions, Jesse, because I do not speak for him or represent him. I didn't now, ask you, ask you to. what I say. Okay, do you, I, I, ask you, I, say. I ask you if you say that it's evil or not. Well, what Minister Farrakhan says, you have to ask him. I'm not going to answer for another man's words. Just like if somebody was to ask me about what you think would Jesse say about this, well, ask Jesse. <laughs> I'm not the guy to be uh, answering that to. Are you a man? Not just physical. I know you're a physical man, but are you a real man? Well, what is a real man according to you? Do you know what a real man is? I'm asking you, what is a man according I'm, I'm, to you? I'm asking you. I'm, I'm interviewing you If you ask me, am I a man? You ask me a rhetorical question. Are you a so man? I want to know. Hold on, Jesse. So I want to know to you, what is your definition of a man? So I can answer that uh, properly. So you don't know if you are a man unless I give you the, my definition? But you asked me a rhetorical question. You know good and well I'm a man like anybody. And like what, is a, what is a man? What is a man in the sense of physical or, the, or what you do as a man? What is a man, Philip? A man is a person, of course, that stands on his principles, uh, a person that treats his family right. He's going to live right best way he can. Um, no one has to do anything for him he would do for himself, and so on and so on. So what's the purpose of that question? I just want to know because you're asking my man. So because I've noticed that in the black community, and not just the black community, but we, are, you and I are black, and we are trying to I, – I, I don't know – a lot about you, but I think you, from what I've been told, you're trying to help black Americans. I've noticed that most black men are not real men. And I know and it's because it's the same most. I, I know, I know it's because they've been raised by their black mothers and grandmothers. So they don't know what it is to be a man. I want to ask, um, I want to tell you because it seemed that you're not sure either. 
a, a man, a real man, is a, a man who loved God with all his heart, soul, and might, along with nothing else or anybody else, and he treats his neighbor as himself. That's what mm-hmm. a real man. So let me ask. Uh, okay. You said that you were married. Are you the head of your wife? Well, we have a great marriage. Uh, we work together, and I can't say anything more than that. Um, we work very well together. Um, where we have gotten to today is because of a lot of the things that me and my wife work together on. And, um, so, and so are you the head of your wife? The head, We work well together. We lead together as a wonderful family unit. So... I don't even know where you're going with that question, but that's my answer to it. And so I would have to take that as a no. Well, you can take it how you want to take it, but I'm telling you how my marriage works. My marriage work is, yes, we work great together. Um, I do make decisions in the household. If I some decision may be uh, screwed up that I possibly could be making, my wife pulled my coattail and said, hey, you, you need to back up a little bit and look at this, what you're doing. And usually when she say that, she's right. Uh, so, but she has definitely uh, been a great asset, you know, to my life. I love her very much. So, you know, if you can make whatever assessment you would like, Jesse, about things that you don't really know about, but that's where well, it's Well, based on your response, based on your answers, uh, it says, no, you're not the head of your wife, but yet you claim to be a son of God. And it's clear in the scriptures that sons of God, if they are married, are the head of their wives. So what do you? So and basically, you what, you're talking, what are you saying, as Jesse? Crisis, I, as as Christ is the head. Let me finish the Jesse, point. As Christ is the head of of him, we and get it that. seems as Jesse, though you're not the head of your wife. So I don't know how so, you Jesse, are. Son let me of ask God. you a question, Jesse. Why why is it you asking about me being the head of my wife? Are you the head of yours? I'm not married, but if I was married, oh, I would. Oh, so but you're speaking on on things that you don't even know about. You're not even married. I can't speak on things that if I'm not married, I can't speak on it. Well, you speaking on my marriage, which you know nothing about. You said so most I'm black men you, aren't if men. I'm, you if said I'm most not black men don't have common sense, but yeah, you don't have anything to back that up. You have definitely have no knowledge about my marriage. I, I, that's what I'm asking you. I asked and you, I'm and you didn't you, say. And you, and you assessing, but let me go back to actually being kind of disrespectful to the answer I'm giving you based upon my marriage. So are you saying that guy who? Or is it married on my marriage when you have no knowledge of it? Are you saying that because I'm not married, I can't come in or ask you about marriage? You could ask me whatever you would like, but when I give you an answer, you have to accept that answer for what it is was based Paul, upon my marriage. Are you a Christian? Was Paul, was Jesus or Paul married? From what in the scripture? No, they wasn't. And yet they, they commented. Them. Yes, they, and yet they commented on the order of marriage. But you can't compare yourself to them, though. Why not? We're not talking about them. We're talking about Why you. can't I? If Christ is my brother and Paul is my brother, why can't I compare? And if we believe in the same father and we are sons of the same fathers, why can't I come in or compare myself well, to them? Well, one thing Jesus didn't do, he didn't ask people about were they a man or not in leading their marriage. And if they responded to him, he basically uh, backhanded, insulted them when they gave them an answer. Jesus didn't do that when they talked about How do you know that? about love. How do you know that? about doing the right thing. In marriage. What is love? What is love? Love is, you know, loving the the father with all your heart, soul, and mind. No, you just and repeat what I just told you, man. What is love? I'm just telling you, you, if you ask me a question, I'm going to repeat <laughs> my answer to what it is. But don't mean, you know, how is it, Jesse? I don't understand you. You, you didn't person, know that in the beginning, question. and now you're just repeating what I said. I did not repeat what you say. This is my answer to it. If my answer to it is the same, then it is the same. Uh, before I go to the phones here, does racism exist? Of course it exists. Where's the proof of it? <laughs> you need proof of that. Let's start all the way back from the transatlantic slave trade and work our way up to now. Um, give me an example of racism, the proof of racism. Oh, let's see. Bringing black people over here in the bottom of ships, you know, packing them in like a can of sardines. And if they got sick, you threw them overboard. Then you eventually got them here, broke up their families. Uh, you sold them like a piece of property. You treated them less than human. You called them the N-word. You took away our language, our heritage, 
uh, broken our families apart. Then you did that. You did all kind of horrible things on the plantation, just like a bunch of savages. So um, everyone knows the atrocities of slavery. Then after the so-called Emancipation Proclamation, how black people started to, you know, work for themselves. They pulled themselves up by their bootstraps, even though they went through slavery. So let me then, ask. Let me ask. Well, the, uh, you want me well, to finish? I'll finish. Well, you, you've given it enough. Um, so you're saying that the blacks in Africa, the upper class black, the rich black who and the Arabs who sold black people into slavery were racist? What they got to do with the transatlantic slave trade and what I just said about that? Of course, though they got blacks. Oh, and I'm glad you mentioned that. They got blacks who are very evil and don't like black people and do everything they can to get a buck or please those within the dominant society uh, for some sort of handouts. So let's do we definitely get into that conversation if you want. to. So were the, the blacks friend. who sold other blacks from Africa, living in Africa, sold other blacks to the Arabs who sold them to the whites. Are you saying, yes, those blacks and those Arabs were racist? I wouldn't say on the guise of what we know as racism today about some sort of racial supremacy, but definitely for a buck and definitely have no love for their people. But let's not try to omit what has happened to the black man and black woman when they got over here, because the African or the so uh, so-called Arab. So you're not going to answer that question. Jesse. Hold on, let me. You're not going to answer point, that Jesse. question. They had nothing to do with how they was treated when they got over here. So that that's not try to scapegoat that evil, savage behavior on other people once you got them. So you're not going to answer that. Let me ask this. So the blacks who own blacks in America, were those blacks racist? Those blacks, you're talking about those who possibly was part of the black boule? Is that what you're talking about? Those blacks who own blacks in America during the time you say slavery existed in America, were those black people racist? Well, not on the guise of racism. How, how can you really have the attitude of racism towards your own people? Now, you yes, know you can why have self-hate. You, you can have self-hate issues. You know why and, you can't admit that? Because there's no such thing as racism or racist. <laughs> and it has never existed. That's why you so, have so, no so proof. The, so the Ku Klux Klan, they, they, just, they just a good old boy club, right? They're they not racist at all, right? So you have no proof. And so oh, my that's God. Why it's all the millions of lyn the lynchings. Uh, the beatings, the castrations, none of that, none of that was just true, Jesse. That's just a lie, a fallacy, and black people just making it up and whining about victimization, right? That Jesse? was cruel and evil, but not racist because oh racism. My. So, so they killed them. Why racism did they kill them, has Jesse? never existed. It's a lie Jesse, that's been made why did up. Jesse, why it's a lie. They killed, Jesse. It's why a lie. Why were they killed? Why only black people were killed? It's a lie. I'm gonna evil, answer Jesse. that. They would have killed white folks, too, and they did kill white folks for standing up for black people. It was, so let's um, make sure we put that out there. It was and what did they call the white folks that they hung? I'm going to tell What's you why they did it. Hold on. It was cruel and uh, evil, but not racist. Racism is a lie that's been made up by the children um, of, the lie, uh, of the lie. It, so it's, it's not real. And that's why we can't resolve this issue because it's an illusion. Now you ask about the uh, KKK and others. Why did they? Why were they so cruel to black people and other white people who stood up for black people? Because the KKK is and was and is an evil group of people who made a, who made a judgment of black Americans, and they hated them, so they tried to take them out. It had nothing to do with color, because okay, so so when they took out their own color people, white oh people. Um, and if you are a Christian, you would know that our battle is a spiritual battle. It's a battle between good and evil. It has nothing to do with the physical. It has nothing to do with the color. And I don't understand how you call yourself a son of God and you don't know these things. You and think, I don't understand how you call yourself a son of God and trying to rationalize the savage behavior you, of the Ku Klux Klan. You and think I don't like, understand how you don't don't sympathize uh, with the things that's happened to the black man and black woman, how their towns were burned down and destroyed. That was evil. Just because they had some things. Come on, Jesse. That was talk evil. About it all. That was evil. Let's go to the phones evil, here. Not racist. Okay. No, right. It was evil and not racist. Let's go to Christian out of Canton, Michigan. <laughs> Kristen, good morning, sir. Thanks for calling. You're on with Philip. 
Hey, good morning, Jesse. How are you? Good, man. Thanks for calling. Good, good. I got a question. Um, in one of your videos, uh, Philip, you re- you referred to Jesse as a coon. I wanted to know what your definition of a coon was. Oh, that's very simple. Uh, a person who constantly repeats white supremacist talking points, a person who is very anti-black, uh, who will always side against what we uh, deem as issues in the black community, which kind of what he is doing right now by saying uh, the Ku Klux Klan was just evil and cruel, but none of it was racist. Okay. Um, so, Christian, so- you, I mean, uh, uh, Philip, you call me a cool? I didn't know that. Something you said on Fox News, I did say that. But how, being a Christian, why didn't you pray for me rather than calling me a coon if I'm wrong? And why did you go to the brother and ask him about it? You didn't I don't come know you like me. that, first of all, and I call it like I see it. That's uh, just bottom line. Oh, you do? Mm-hmm. <laughs> just like your friend Donald Trump, I call it like I see it. Uh, is he a coon too? I can't call Donald Trump that because Donald Trump not selling out his own people. So who are you talking about on that? So being He's actually, a, he actually uh, galvanizing his people. Being a Christian, Paul criticized the Jews. Was Paul anti-Jew or what, and was he a coon? Jesse, Paul has nothing to do with our conversation. Oh, you Jesse. ask me questions I'm not going to even answer. I didn't think so. Philip, you say you call it like it is. But you were afraid to call it like it is when I asked about Louis Farrakhan and Barack Obama. So it seemed that you were kind of um, weak in how you call it or when you call no, it. No, I'm not, I'm not weak at all or anything. But you I are weak. It. When it comes to Minister Farrakhan, he could speak for himself. Oh, He's been speaking for a very but you long call me coon. Time. When it comes to Barack Obama, you call I me coon when I'm behind it. my so back. It is what it is on that. You call me coon behind my back. Uh, and you're not I don't the head. You, Jesse, it's the first time I ever had a chance to talk with you. So then why'd you call me cool? Opinion, uh, at the time in the video. But you're not even the head of your wife. Um, let's go back to Kristen. You don't have one, so okay. Let's Kristen, go. go ahead. Okay, well, <laughs> um, the question I want to ask is, okay, so you said Donald Trump's not a coon because he's not selling his people out. So by your definition, the coon is someone who sells out their race to benefit the other race? When it comes to black people, you, we all know that definition. Any of those, any of those we've been having that since slavery with the house slave, uh, those who would always want to sell out those on the plantation, it's still been going on as of today. You have those uh, African-Americans, and not just African-Americans, there's also other groups that would do the same. They will sell out or cut the throat of those within their group to please those within the dominant society or those who they think they can get ahead with. Okay, so by your definition, then abolitionists who fought to end slavery were coons because they went against their group to fight for to to they sold out their group for the benefit of another group. Would would you agree with that? Well, and what happened to a lot of those abolitionists by the Ku Klux Klan and stuff like that? They killed them, right? Because they viewed them, quote unquote, as a sellout. But understand, those abolitionists were fighting for things. That was just right because those people were Christian people who saw what was wrong. Do you those agree who, with him that who, they who, sold them out? That's, not, that's not what I asked you. Right. You're not yeah, answering the question who, once again. Let me expl- finish explaining myself. But no, like he didn't ask you for an explanation. He didn't ask for an explanation. Interrupt me. He didn't ask for an explanation. Fundamentally, what you said was that Donald Trump's not a coon because he's not selling out his own people. But if you look at the fundamental facts, white people sold out their group, their native group for the benefit of another racial group, even though it, had, it wouldn't benefit them not one bit. Helping to free black people or, or keeping black people from being slaves would not benefit white people one bit. So by that, by your definition of what you said, white abolitionists are coons then. Is that correct? No, they're not. Because when the black people who are doing this fence for the, the pleasing or to, to repeat these talking points so they can have a shield and a cover, it's not for anything noble. And we all know that. Amazing. Christian, thanks for your call, buddy. All right, you're welcome. Have a good one. All right. I am telling and have been telling black Americans for the last 25 years that they should return to God. They should get married before having children. They should love their neighbor as themselves. They should start businesses in their communities. They should raise their children in the proper way to go. How is that selling out? 
I say the same thing. So no, that's not about? the question. How is that selling out? When you're talking about those things, I have no issue if you're talking about those things. Amazing. We're talking about, for instance, saying that most black men aren't men or most black people don't have common sense. Well, you have no way to back that up. When you could say that you could find people in every group that is have that Is it common assessment. sense to hate the white man? Is it common sense to follow the blind leaders, so-called blind leaders of the black community? And um, is it common sense to not start businesses in your own community, to rely on the government? Is it common sense to allow uh, your women to have abortions like 90 going north? None of that stuff is common sense. So if black well, people, can I respond if to most that? black people have common sense, it should be in operation. You should see it in their action. I, I'm running out of time. I want to go to the Bible, go to guy. Bible, go to guy, you're on with Philip. Oh, thank you, Jesse. Good morning, Philip. Good morning. Philip, um, wow, there's been so much to comment on. Um, but all you have to tell Jesse is, look, Jesse, like you did before, look, Jesse, there's different versions of common sense. Not all common senses agree, and uh, my common sense is, is different from your common sense. And then you're off the hook, but <laughs> uh, because your common sense surely doesn't work. I mean, it's nowhere close to common sense. Um, the problem- and by the way, common sense, Philip, comes from God, not from man. Yeah, so it doesn't have many versions. Did you have a question now, for him? Go ahead. Yes, Philip. Um, are you prepared for the flack that's coming your way if you go the Bill Cosby and the Jesse Lee Peterson way and actually tell black folks what they're wrong in something? I, mean, um, I do that all the time. I'm hard on black people now. I'm on any other group of people because I love black people and I don't when like you're hard to see on black in their condition. People, when you're hard on black people, do you get called a coon? No, I don't. Wow. Well, so not yet, huh? Not at all, because they know I do it from a place of love. I don't really repeat and oh, beat I them see. down. Well, if a white man does it, or if a Jesse Lee Peterson does it, then they're a coon. Well, first of all, when uh, uh, an alleged uh, white man do it, it, you need to worry about your time. community and worry about what's going on in your family. Let me worry about what's going on in mine. No, he called oh, white oh, people a racist, Bobby Gotti guy. No, I didn't call white people racist at all. I would never say all white people are racist. That is a lie, Jason. Jason Lee Peterson. So, black people are not my family? Well, when it comes to certain issues, you don't know the internal workings of the issues within the black community. You have issues in your community you need to deal with uh, as of right now. So let me let me and other brothers and sisters who have love for our community deal with those issues, and you deal with the issues within your community. So, Philip, if you are a Christian, how is it that you're separated from white people? I'm not separated from anybody, but we but have to focus on what we care about your community. You, you talk and about please. your community versus yes, their community. Yes, because I know what's causing the problems within our community, and I need to focus on that because we need to fix our community so we won't on, be on welfare, so we won't be on but food. But why stuff. do you— So our children—hold on, Jason. Why do you, you identify? You why do you identify with being black rather than identify with being of God? Because I am a black man in America, and you let me know that every single day. But let me let me. How do I let you know that? I, well, look in the mirror. <laughs> Baba Gotcha, Baba Gotcha, Thanks for your call, sir. Philip, thanks for coming on with me. I appreciate it. All right, man. All right, buddy. All right. Okay, folks. Back in a moment. <laughs> 